Hey guys, welcome back to Medicine Deconstructed. I'm your host, Dr. Jay Rutland. We really appreciate all the subscriptions. Turn on those notifications so you can see the new videos that come out every Tuesday at three o'clock Pacific time. Today, we're gonna talk about high resolution chest CT. You guys see me talk about them every day on my Instagram stories. Now you're gonna learn how to read them. exactly to read a high resolution chest CT, we have to understand what the lung looks like under a microscope. You guys know me. I'm going to bring you down before I build you up. So let's think about the lung and lung histology. As you can see here, when you look at the lung under a microscope, what you see are a collection of cells that make these air sacs or these balloons. These balloons are called alveoli. If you zoom in to an alveolus, what you're gonna see is a capillary membrane and your red blood cells running through that capillary membrane and this is where gas exchange takes place. So when you're looking at this basic unit of function of the lung, we call this the secondary pulmonary lobule. Why am I telling you this? I'm telling you this because what a CAT scan is, especially a high resolution CAT scan, is a bunch of secondary pulmonary lobules stacked on top of one another. When you're looking at this cartoon, it's outlined by interlobular septa. When you look at the interlobular septa, what you can see is a little green vessel flowing through that septa. That's where the lymph tissue is. That's where the white blood cells travel to get all over your body. And so this interlobular septa outlines the secondary pulmonary lobule. Within this secondary pulmonary lobule are alveoli that stack on top of one another. And you can see these alveoli and you can see the pulmonary veins and pulmonary arteries kind of outlining these alveoli that are within the secondary pulmonary lobule. So you really wanna imagine this cartoon as you're scrolling through the CT so you can develop this understanding of what's going on. Now, within that secondary pulmonary lobule, you'll be able to see pathology. And as you're looking at the pathology, I'm gonna teach you how to describe what the high resolution CAT scan is showing. Not exactly what the illness is, but how to describe it to your attending or to your family member when you're looking at the CAT scan. There are six basic findings of a high resolution chest CT, but these findings are based on what's called lung attenuation. So one of the first lessons of chest CT is, I hate to say it, but it's black and white. Increased lung attenuation is more white, as you see here. Reduced lung attenuation is more black. So that's the first thing. Whenever you're looking at a CAT scan and you're scrolling through the CAT scan, just have an overall look at the lung. Is it blacker than you think? Is it whiter than you think? If it is, all you gotta do is say to your attending is, increase lung attenuation or decrease lung attenuation. So we're gonna talk about increased lung attenuation or more whiteness. So increased whiteness in a normal appearing lung. What does that mean? So let's go through the three basic findings of increased lung attenuation. The first finding is linear and reticular findings. When you look at this CAT scan here, what you can see is you can see increased linear and reticular findings. Look at the outline of the bronchial and the outline of the pulmonary artery. You can see it's really, really thick and really white. You can also see the interlobular septa are really, really thick and really, really white. So this is increased lung attenuation with linear and reticular findings, and it's very, very nice in this photo. The second finding is nodules or nodular opacities. Now what a nodule is, is any well circumscribed soft tissue that is three centimeters or less in size. If it's three centimeters or more, we call it a lung mass. If it's less, it's a lung nodule. When you look at the nodules on this CAT scan, these nodules are not only well circumscribed and less than three centimeters, but these nodules also are located where? On the interlobular septa. So we would actually call these nodules interstitial nodules. Now that helps with the differential diagnosis, but that's not what this lecture is for. 
This lecture is for you to go to your attending and say, hey, Dr. Smith, I see well-circumscribed interstitial nodules on this CAT scan of the lung. The third finding of increased lung attenuation is quite frankly, parenchymal opacities. So parenchymal opacities are any increased whiteness that's all collected together that's larger than three centimeters in size. A pneumonia will look this way, and you can also see this here. So when you see this really, really dense whiteness, it's easy to identify, and you call that a parenchymal opacity. You can see that here. What you have to know is almost this light-skinned opacification. That's what I call it. So ground glass opacities are any opacification in which you can still see the pulmonary arteries. So when you look at decreased lung attenuation findings, we're talking about areas of the lung that look more black. So that first finding, and I put this all on one line, you're gonna see cysts, you're gonna see bronchiectasis, okay? And these cysts are gonna look very particular. Remember what a cyst is. A cyst is a rounded collection of just darkness. Bronchiectasis, that's a bronchial that's bigger than a pulmonary artery. That's also a rounded collection of darkness. When you're looking at CAT scans, the bronchioles and the pulmonary arteries travel together. Typically speaking, the pulmonary artery is always about 30% bigger than the bronchial because oxygen vasodilates the pulmonary artery, so it makes it bigger. But you have to be able to differentiate between a cyst and a bronchial. And the best way to do this is to look for that pulmonary artery because when you have an area of darkness next to a white circle, that should tell you that that's probably bronchiectasis more than it is a cyst. So if you look here, you can see that the bronchial can become bigger than the pulmonary artery, and that's bronchiectasis. These are little cysts, and you can call them cysts, but a collection of this together, what does it look like? There's a cereal named after it. It's called honeycombs, right? So it looks like honeycombs, so we call it honeycombing of the lung. It's a sign of fibrosis. Make sure that you define where the cyst is located. If the cyst is high up, say, hey, yeah, this cyst is in the upper load. If you look at this next picture, you're gonna see cysts that are very, very thin-walled. Now, if this patient is 26 years old, right, and is a female, this probably represents a condition called LAM, lymphangiomyelomatosis, which is a smooth muscle disorder. I only say that because when you see thin-walled cysts in a female like this, it's probably what it is. When you look at this CAT scan, what you can see are these reduced lung attenuation findings, these black areas that kind of look like cysts, but there's like a white dot in the center, and it's surrounded by a whole bunch of blackness. That is dead lung. We call that emphysema. Know what this looks like. Now, the second finding of reduced lung attenuation is also a difficult concept to grasp, but it's called a mosaic attenuation sign. So what mosaic is, just like a mosaicism, you got areas of dark and you've got areas of white. And it's your job as a physician to have an understanding of what's the pathology and what's not. Now what we're gonna look for, it's a really difficult concept to grasp on a CAT scan. I only say that because there's specific kind of diagnoses that go with it. You can see that there's kind of a mosaic pattern. You've got these areas of gray, you've got these areas of black. And you can say there's a mosaic pattern. Now it's gonna to be tough when you're a beginner to understand which part is pathological. I want you to look in the black areas. If you look in the black areas and the white vessels are really, really tiny or almost gone, we call that specifically mosaic perfusion. And that's probably secondary to blood vessel issues, embolism, constriction, who knows? The third finding of reduced lung attenuation is quite simply air trapping. Now, air trapping is very difficult to differentiate from a mosaic attenuation or perfusion pattern, and it takes a very trained eye. But I want you to imagine this. If somebody takes a deep breath in and their lungs are full of air, it's gonna be tough to see air trapping because their whole lung is full of air. When they take that breath out and exhale, what air trapping is, is the inability for air to escape from the lung. So what's it gonna look like? Air looks really black. And what you can see here is this is an example of air trapping. So this air is in here. So you might wanna get an expiratory CT so you can differentiate air trapping 
from a mosaic pattern, which can become difficult, but this is a great example of air trapping. So you've learned the six basic findings on a high resolution chest CT. So if you're a resident, a med student, a fellow, and you're rounding in the ICU and you're rounding on the pulmonary floor, you can look at the CAT scan and you could understand how to define the lung parenchyma and you could understand how to objectively tell your attending what you're seeing. The next layer is understanding the differential diagnosis. Now that's not something that I can teach in a 15 minute YouTube video. That's something that's going to come as you look at these CAT scans. However, what I've taught you up to this point is how to look at the lung parenchyma and what you're seeing and how to describe the lung parenchyma specifically. What we also have to know is how to look at soft tissue within your lung because you want to be able to look at the blood vessels for pulmonary embolisms and you also want to be able to look at lymph nodes to see if they're larger in case you have to biopsy them if you see a big large lung mass or lung nodule that needs to be biopsied. So to appropriately stage cancers, especially lung cancers, you have to understand the lymph node locations. But let's first understand how we look at the mediastinum. So as you're traveling down the trachea, you're passing lymph nodes if you have a bronchoscope. And you can see here, lymph node station two, lymph node station four, lymph node station seven, got lymph node station 10. As you scroll through the CAT scan here, you can see lymph node stations four right here. You can also see if we go down a level, lymph node station seven and lymph node stations 10. Under certain circumstances, I may biopsy these lymph nodes and you can see these pictures right here where I put a needle through the lymph node, biopsy these lymph nodes because it's gonna tell me if cancer is present or if another condition like hypersensitivity pneumonitis is present or if another condition like sarcoidosis is present. I can biopsy this tissue, look at it under a microscope and get a full understanding, not only of what's in this image, but also under the microscope. Now, the easiest thing in the world to read on a CAT scan, especially a CAT scan with contrast, is you can really read pulmonary embolisms. So now what you're looking at is we're in soft tissue windows and you can see the blood vessels are accentuated. They have white in them because they have contrast. Within that contrast right here, you can see this dark line, this very, very dark line that goes on both sides of the blood vessel. That's a pulmonary embolism. Easy to read, easy to look at, easy to identify, depending on how sick the patient is, not so easy to treat. Now, as we have learned how to read CAT scans, being able to tell your attending or your fellow or your resident what the objective findings are is important because it helps create a differential diagnosis in your head and you have seen the patient. You're at the bedside, so you know what you're looking for and I want you to apply it. So I want you guys to look for those CAT scan findings. I want you guys to look for the lymph nodes, look for those embolisms and be able to contribute to your healthcare team. So as we move forward with the channel, you're gonna see CAT scans. You're gonna see my differential diagnosis. I want you to build on these concepts as you move forward through the different episodes. Understand that lung histology, understanding what it looks like under a microscope is extremely important and applicable when you're looking at a high resolution CT chest. If you have any comments or feedback, please leave them, subscribe to the channel, hit that notification button, and once again, I'll see you every Tuesday at three o'clock Pacific time. Thanks for joining Medicine Deconstructed. I'm Dr. Jay Rutland.